So this video is going to be a little different than my other ones in that this is going to be talking about a topic that's happened relatively recently and in regards to a company that I have known for years now and has had a very large impact on my life. Also, sorry if this comes off as a bit unscripted at times. I originally planned on making a script for this, but considering the overwhelming amount of people talking about this right now, I think it'd be better served if I got out my pure, unfiltered thoughts about this situation with minor editing. Let's talk about Channel Awesome. Channel Awesome was originally a site created for content contributors to come on and basically have free reign for your content. It didn't matter what you made, didn't matter what it was about, so long as it had talent behind it. And for years, it kept that status. That guy with the glasses was essentially Doug Walker, Rob Walker, and Mike McCaud's response to all the YouTube copyright stuff that was happening around that time. And, admittedly for a while, it worked. Many early site contributors that included Linkara, Spoonie, Obscurus Lupa, Phalus, Angry Joe, and so many more helped to give the site an image that it otherwise wouldn't have had. It also brought about a huge sense of camaraderie between all the contributors that worked on there. There were anniversary specials made every year that were just the content contributors of the site coming together and having this grandiose big adventure. However, as of late, and with the last mass exodus of content contributors, things have already started shifting against them once again. Now, you may think that I might be referring to Mr. Matoker's retrospective series that he did a while back, and that I'm just basically rehashing old news. However, if you type in the hashtag essentially anywhere right now, as of the time of this recording, you're going to see a very, very different situation. As I mentioned before, Obscurus Lupo was one of the site's more earlier creators, as was Mars Girl. However, back in around 2015, there was a mass exodus of creators, one of which included Obscurus Lupa, and many wondered what was going on, why this was so out of the blue, and why how when they immediately left, all of the videos that had been archived were just deleted instantaneously, instead of just being archived or taken off gradually to ease people out of it. However, this is one of the many, many missteps that I have yet to talk about. Fast forward to around 2018. Fast forward to around 2018, when Obscurus Lupa, who for the rest of the time I'm just going to refer to as Allison just because it's easier, was asked by one of her fans about Doug, aka the Nostalgia Critic, and what her thoughts were on the IT review that he did in 2017. What followed was a list of grievances that were laid out plain and simple about why she didn't like her content. Furthermore, she actually expounded upon this with a long inundative and detailed dialogue about her experiences with Doug Walker and with Channel Awesome. Specifically with both of the Walker brothers, Doug Walker and Rob Walker, and of the CEO, Mike McCod. What follows afterwards is what I can only describe as a mosh pit of empathy and sympathy from both the fans and from fellow contributors on the site. Content contributors like Mars Girl started to talk more about the anniversary specials that I had brought up before. However, she went into increasingly more detail about just how bad this was managed. And when I say bad, I don't mean that they didn't get anyone to pay for them flying out to there, even though that did happen. I'm talking about numerous claims of sexual harassment, sexual deviancy within the company, numerous accounts of sexism within the company, outright abuse of content creators, how the site was being mismanaged internally, to just how really, really, really awful the drafts were for said anniversary specials, and how little they represented the content creators as a whole. I'll have a link to the beginning thread in the description below, but needless to say, this branched off and spread like wildfire. Many of the site's other previous contributors, like Linkara and Todd, started to interject even more and showed just how even more of a shit show this was, and how lesser creators, like Pushing Up Roses, were being treated just from a site perspective, not even from how they were treated in the anniversary specials or how they were treated in real life. I mean, don't get me wrong, the in-real-life conditions that were listed in these threads were far far worse than you can ever possibly imagine, but the stuff that was happening on the site to creators that were just getting on there is, in a way, worse. It all stems from two factors in particular. The utter complacency of Doug and Rob Walker, and the absolute cancerous businessman himself, Mike McCod. Remember when I referenced how all these videos were suddenly being mass deleted? 
there was a gigantic rebranding of the site, and just how badly mismanaged it was. Well, Mike was the cause of all of it. This shit goes so deep, and there is just so much to dig through at this point that I've actually had to go through other sources because the Twitter thread is just, I mean, it's just a mess. If you know how Twitter works, you know multiple threads keep branching off from page to page, and it, it's, it's just, ugh, I hate that about Twitter's layout. Luckily, though, not only is Allison comprising a Google Doc of all the events there for our convenience, but someone on Tumblr actually took the liberty of going through all of our posts, my own posts included because I was right in the thick of it as it was happening, and actually helped compile it into a list to better digest what happened. Just for future reference, this has no association with Mars Girls, but is actually written by a fan. The real Tumblr user is known as Wendy Nerd Writes. So please do not misassociate this with having anything directly to do with Mars Girl herself. That said, I'm going to read pretty much line for line what's happened. Keep in mind, these are just some of the grievances that have happened over time. This list hasn't even listed all of them. This is still something that's ongoing, but I'm doing this to prove a point. All of these relate to these three individuals in particular, whether they were complacent in it or whether they were intentionally doing it. Do not harass these individuals, mind you, but do keep in mind this is what they have been up to behind the scenes on the site. Number one, firing an employee who had worked for them literally every day, including holidays and weekends because she had to take time off for surgery, then holding her severance hostage to have her sign a contract saying she wouldn't work for another media site for two to four years. Number two, turning a blind eye to sexual harassment until it almost or actually got violent. Number three, not compensating people for days of work. Number four, not providing food or water for people on their movie sets. Number five, trying to force two contributors to do a rape slash sexual assault scene. And below is just a screenshot of what the supposed scene would have looked like in one of the original drafts for To Boldly Flee, one of the anniversary specials. Number six, spending $90,000 of viewers' money on Pop Quiz Hotshot. I'm going to link the blog in the description just so you guys have all the links available to you. But if you don't know about Pop Quiz Hotshot, it was essentially a Kickstarter campaign to try and make a game show at the Channel Awesome Warehouse, and it just ended up being a spectacular failure. Number seven, buying a warehouse studio and not bothering to sound dampen it. This is in reference to how the Nostalgia Critic and the main Chicago crew bought up a warehouse for their original project, Demo Reel, that eventually fell through. And when that happened, they essentially had an empty studio and needed to fill it up with, well, all the stuff that they were going to do for the Nostalgia Critic. And not once did they bother to sound dampen it whenever they needed to use this part of the studio. I mean, for God's sakes, the place where they film Nostalgia Critic is supposed to be where the break room would be in an office. Number eight, mass producing and selling prints of an artist's work without informing or compensating her. Number nine, firing someone for anti-Gamergate videos. Number ten, mislabeling videos in their queue, then screaming at any contributors who mention the mix-up to fans. Number eleven, constantly changing scripts for anniversary videos so no one could learn their lines on time. Number 12, a general was so esque approach to filmmaking and treatment of cast slash crew. Like, just, wow. Wow. Right down to the people feigning on set. There were even camera shenanigans, and this guy has covered both the room and the disaster artist. This guy in reference to Doug Walker. Number 13, not informing contributors that they'd be retiring the Nostalgia Critic character years ago. This was in reference to To Boldly Flee, a movie that was essentially supposed to kill off the Nostalgia Critic. And when that did it, they just assumed that when the Nostalgia Critic ended, everyone else would follow suit. Even though that's not at all how companies work. But again, links in the description. Number 14. General mismanagement of footage, videos, resources, and staff. And expecting people to do tons of work in basically no time. Number 15, verbally abusing contributors to the point of tears for their advertising practices, the ad revenue that some were trying to live on, and practices they'd eventually engage in, such as mid-rolls. Keep in mind, these people were not paid in anything but quote-unquote exposure. 
Also, and this is not from the Tumblr blog, this is just of my own knowledge, they were never allowed to have Patreons on the site or ever advertise them. Something to keep in mind. Number 16, never addressing contributor issues and complaints, insulting and harassing female people who had suggestions slash complaints. Number 17, shutting down entire sites without forewarning to the contributors. Number 18, general misogyny towards female talent. This is more so in reference to Mike McCod, but it also sprinkles in a bit of Doug Walker and Rob Walker in there if for anything but them standing idly by while all of this happened. Number 19, management not being available to site members. Keep in mind that Channel Awesome is a full-blown corporation. Number 20, this shit. What this shit is referring to is how there was supposed to be a company policy set in place that the contributors had been asking for years, and all they got was a newsletter saying to contact Robert Walker with no address, no email, no actual way to contact him, and them only saying it was coming soon. And it never did. Again, links below. I cannot stress this enough. There are links within these lists that link to the actual sources in question. Number 21, randomly dropping people for quote-unquote not posting videos despite random rule changes and or the videos simply not being scheduled right on the manager's end. Interjecting again here, it was also later found out that some content creators would get off scot-free even if they were gone for two years at the least, even if they just so much as mildly told management. Number 22, this shit too. Basically a Prime membership that never produced anything that cost $30 to get exclusive videos that they mass released a year later anyways. Number 23, a creepy and flippant approach to the characters they wrote, ignoring the existence and work of contributors who had been there for years, including excluding them from video events directly involving their own extensive work, such as the Don Blue special, and using other contributors' footage in quote-unquote response videos without telling them, etc., etc. This list could go on for ages, but they just ended it there. I think the two things that get me the most with all of this are that nobody knew that any of this shit was going on or that it affected some of the content creators of the people that both I and many others looked up to. All of this could have been avoided if they had managed any of this properly. And keep in mind, this isn't just, oh, this just happened a few times and everyone's just nitpicking. No, this was over the course of 10 years. And in that time, all of this has come to light. We already had a good idea of some of the shit that was happening behind the scenes before, during the mass exodus back in 2015. But with this, there is just so much more to dig through, and still so much active discussion going on that it's kind of sickening. My notifications have been going off the charts since this has continued to grow, and... In a way, it's been kind of cathartic. I've had my own grievances with Doug Walker over the years that I never really cared to admit or show because I thought he would be able to improve. I thought he would be able to move past this and that all of this was in the past. I was being completely ignorant on that front. The nostalgic critic videos that I watch are still of some quality. So it's not the decline that makes me want to say what I'm about to say next. Doug, Rob, McCaud, and any affiliates with them should just start anew and just try to move on to their own separate ventures, or at least address this publicly. Doug and Rob, in a business sense, are not good people. Or rather, they're ungraceful people. When it comes to everything else, they're mostly okay. They seem like genuinely nice people whenever people have met them, but again, that's just a convention, so that could also be a front. But I don't think they're to fault as much as Mike in all of this. And normally, in a case like this, I would at least try to attempt to create a solution that might benefit all parties in the long run. But this is a special case. Doug and Rob can't just walk out even if they wanted to. And furthermore, even if they wanted to acknowledge everything that's happened, they wouldn't be able to because of Mike. Mike will not let anything slide about mismanagement of his company. And yes, it's 
his company. What's more is that Doug and Rob seem to know this, and they also seem to know that they can't leave. Mike Wicott is actually a majority stakeholder in the Nostalgia Critic IP and the Channel Awesome IP, meaning he has complete and utter reign to do whatever they wanted with them, even if something were to happen to Doug and Rob, the main people that made the show what it is. So, in a way, I feel sympathetic in that respect, and despite what I may have said in those tweets earlier, I do still think that the Nostalgia Critic and everything else on the website still has that one sliver of hope of maybe getting better. It has the potential to rebound back, but something with upper management needs to change. Something about how everything is being run needs to change, because as we speak, they are still losing creators. One of their longest and most affiliated members of the site, Linkara, just left. Time of the Shadows, another one associated with Channel Awesome, has also left. Swade, Diamanda Hagen, Mike J, all of them are just completely gone. The site is currently bleeding talent, and unless something happens, this is going to be a problem that's going to get worse and worse. And that's what this hashtag is for. Change the channel is a hashtag that I support by its literal meaning. I do not want to see Channel Awesome crash and burn. I do not want to see the Nostalgia Critic or its IPs crash and burn. But I want things to be fixed. I want the future contributors that go onto the site to have an experience there that was like that of the early contributors way, way back, or what was at least perceived of those early contributors, an open environment for creativity. No bullshit with upper management, none of the misogynistic bullcrap that happened, and if this were to happen again, what can be done to fix it? For that to happen, they need to wipe the corporate slate completely clean and start over from scratch. Otherwise, this is going to keep happening, and sooner or later, they're going to lose all the talent that they have in their site, if they haven't already. There are still going to be a few that will come right to the defense of them, just out of the matter that they're still friends, but even that claim's been tested over the past 10 years. That guy with the glasses slash channel awesome has already lost a lot of its reputation in these past 5 years. It doesn't need this to exacerbate it even more. But maybe this is what has to be done. I remember watching shows like Nostalgia Critic or Atop the Fourth Wall or any content creator on that site that comes to mind. And I was in awe of what that site represented and what from the outside looking in that meant to many creators. It's what inspired me to start having a social media presence and make content as I've done to this day. Without that guy with the glasses slash channel awesome and the ideas that it brought with it, I wouldn't be here. So I have to give credit where it's due. But in terms of how it's run, this is a ship that is slowly sinking. If they don't try and patch those problems soon, having no content creators is going to be the least of their problems.